So what happens in a file system is when you close a program, the program objects are deleted permanently. But in terms of an object oriented DBMS, since the DBMS recognizes the object oriented languages like C++ or Java, it recognizes the program object. So it's like, hey, I recognize you. I'll save you. Get it? Recognize you, save you. Hey guys. Welcome to another DBMS tutorial. Today we'll be learning about advantages of DBMS. This is the same thing as implications of DBMS. So I don't want you guys to get confused. This is one and the same thing. Alright, so what we are going to learn today. First, we'll look at all the advantages of DBMS over file system in brief. Second, then we'll learn each advantage in detail. So these are the two things that we'll learn. The advantages in brief and then in detail. Alright, so let's get started. There are total nine advantages of DBMS over file system, which are as follows. First is controlling redundancy. Second is restricting unauthorized access. Third, providing persistent storage for programs. Fourth, providing storage structures and search techniques for efficient query processing. Fifth is providing backup and recovery. Sixth is providing multiple user interface. Seventh is enforcing integrity constraints. Eighth is permitting inferencing and actions using rules. And ninth and the final one is complex relationship among data. So you're like, whoa, this is a huge list. How are we going to remember this? Don't worry. What we'll do is we'll divide this into three different categories of advantages. This is how I like to learn. So I'll teach you the same way. First, we we'll divide them into three categories. Storage advantage, security advantage and efficiency advantage. So now in terms of storage advantage, you have two advantages. In terms of security advantage, you have three advantages. And in terms of efficiency advantages, you have four advantages. Okay. So remember this like this storage, security, efficiency, two, three, four. All right. Now, what are the advantages in terms of storage advantages? First one is controlling redundancy and second one is persistent storage for program objects. So these are the two advantages in terms of storage advantage for DBMS. Now, in, when it comes to security, you have three advantages, backup and recovery, restricting unauthorized access. And the third is enforcing integrity constraint. So these are the three security advantages. And when it comes to efficiency, you have four advantages. First one is storage structure and search techniques. Second is multiple user interface. Third, complex relationship among data. And the fourth, inferencing and actions using rules. So now that we have divided this nine advantages in three categories, it's much more easier to remember. Okay, so there are three categories, storage, security and efficiency. In terms of them, we have two, three and four respective advantages. So let's look at storage advantages. When it comes to storage advantages, you have two advantages. First one is controlling redundancy and second one is persistent storage for program objects. First look at controlling redundancy. Now what happens in terms of controlling redundancy? What is redundancy? Okay, redundancy is basically when you enter the data twice and why you have to control it. There are three reasons. First, wastage of storage space. Second, duplication of effort and third, inconsistent data. So these are the three reasons why you have to control redundancy. Okay. Now let's look at the providing persistent storage for programs. Now, what do you mean by providing persistent storage for programs? Okay. What happens in a file system is once the program is closed, the data structures, the program objects are discarded. Okay. So once the program is closed, you have lost all the values. When you reopen the programs, you don't have the program objects. You don't have the data structures unless programmer explicitly stores the values in separate files, which is very complicated. And it also requires conversion of the data structures to file format while terminating and vice versa while restarting. So what happens in a file system is when you close a program, the program objects are deleted permanently. But in terms of an object oriented DBMS, since the DBMS recognizes the object oriented languages like C++ or Java, it recognizes the program object. So it's like, hey, I recognize you. I'll save you. Get it? Recognize you, save you. Since the object survives the termination of the program, then it can be retrieved again automatically. It is called persistent. Okay. So basically it survives closing of the program and is available again. Hence it's called persistent. All right. So this is the second advantage in terms of storage advantage. We have learned the storage advantages. Now let's look at the security advantages. First one is restricting unauthorized access. Okay. Now this is a very simple one. What happens in a file system is if a user wants to access some information, okay, the user will have to access all the information. Let's look at an example over here. We have a file system and the student wants to just check his attendance. So he comes to the teacher. He's like, ma'am, I want to check my attendance. He's like, okay, fine. This is the list. Okay. 
Now while Aaron is checking his attendance, he can see the parents contact numbers of Blake and Charlie. Okay, so what Aaron came in for that is his checking his attendance and what he can get access to are two different things. Okay, so this is very risky and you don't want any unauthorized person to get access to the data that he is not supposed to have. What happens in DBMS is you have advantages of restricting unauthorized access by how? By giving the person exact data or information that he or she is permitted to have. Okay. And how is this achieved? This is achieved by creating different database user accounts with different privileges. Okay. Now this job is done by a DBA that is database administrator. The database administrator will create an account with certain privileges and that person will be able to access the data only that he is privileged to have. Okay. So that is how you restrict unauthorized access in a DBMS. Now let's look at the another security advantage providing backup and recovery. Now by far this is very important. Now what happens is suppose there is some technical failure okay there is some technical failure in terms of software or in terms of hardware suppose the electricity goes or the current goes and the program is completing some transaction and suddenly some failure happens of the error now you don't want the data to get lost okay so in that case you need to have some backup and recovery options okay so here in dbms what happens is suppose there is some error that comes or there is some malfunction what what dbms does is it makes sure to restore the database to the state till where the transaction had completed or will restore it to the point before starting the transaction which is the second best thing okay so this is what you mean by backup and recovery you get the backup of the data before the transaction or at least till the time your transaction was completed and then you can resume from there so this is what backup and recovery means now let's look at the third security advantage enforcing integrity constraints now what do you mean by enforcing integrity constraints basically integrity is maintaining the state of the database so that the database does not malfunction because of the entry made by the person who is using the database for example every value in the name column can have maximum 50 characters or age value of a student shouldn't be less than six years of age in a school admission process or for each student id there should be a course id okay now this is called referential integrity because you are maintaining reference for each student id with a course id otherwise a student who does not have a course id is not studying anything so that is going to question the integrity of the database other example of integrity constraint is the value of each course id must be different okay now this is called uniqueness constraint basically for each course you have a unique id and hence you maintain different different course ids for different different courses so that you have a reference all right so this is called uniqueness constraint now let's look at the third category of advantages that is efficiency advantages first one that comes in terms of efficiency advantage is providing storage structures and search techniques now when it comes to dbms it is much more efficient than file system why because there are two advantages of dbms that we have which are not there in file system first you have special data structures and second you have special queries that are much more efficient than finding the data in a file system okay now these queries and this data structure now which are these in data structures they are called tree data structures okay which are also known as indexes okay and also efficient queries these both things are created by dba that is database administrator okay since they are stored on a disk dbms are stored on a disk the database should be provided with special search techniques and data structures to execute the queries faster. So when it comes to querying and updating the database, you have much more faster queries. And second thing, you have indexes, which are tree data structures that are much more efficient than a file system. Now let's look at the seventh advantage, providing multiple user interface. A DBMS was designed to handle multiple users because a file system cannot have multiple users accessing it at the same time. Okay. Whereas a DBMS was designed to handle multiple users at the same time. A DBMS has different type of users such as standalone user, application programmers, web users, etc. So for different users, there are different user interfaces. For example, a simple standalone user with less to no technical knowledge will be happy to use a GUI which is graphical user interface. Whereas an application programmer will need a user interface that is a programming language interface so that the programmer can actually edit or can actually see the bugs in the user interface whereas a normal user will need a graphical user interface which is very easier for that person to use it 
okay so this is an advantage that a dbms has it provides multiple users different different interfaces now let's look at the eighth advantage representing complex relationship among data a dbms must have capabilities of first thing represent a variety of complex relationship among data second to define new relationship as they arise and third to retrieve and update related data easily and efficiently so these are the capabilities that a dbms must have so that it has advantages over a file system let's look at the final advantage permitting inferencing and actions using rules some database have the capability to set some rules and to continuously check that the rules are complied and if the rules are complied then to do a specific action okay and if the rules are not complied then to another specific action so basically you are using inferencing based on the rules okay so for example suppose the dbms has a rule to check the attendance of students and the rule is set such that every student must have attendance above 75% if the attendance is above 75% the student is given bonus 5 marks but if the attendance goes below 75% the parent of the student are sent a warning email regarding the attendance so the dbms checks for these rules after every update to check whether they comply or not and to take action accordingly so this is what you mean by permitting inferencing and action using rules so that's it for today guys thank you very much for watching if you have any queries feel free to ask them in the comment section below if you have any suggestions please write them in the comment section below if you like the video please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel Thank you very much.